Hello again everybody, this is my first video again in a while now, I've been extremely busy, but don't worry, I'm starting to get back into it. Um, this one is directed again at teaching the controversy, that is, teach both evolution and creationism, let the kids decide. Um, this one is particularly dedicated towards Margaret Lofton and the members of the Polk County School Board who the Pastafarians kind of handed it to, but they never really gave them an explanation as to why their view was wrong, they simply kind of criticized them and that was the end of it. So I, I did an earlier video on this subject and it was it was somewhat rushed. It was right after I had gotten my um um Adobe Premiere Pro and started making videos and I, I, I somewhat rushed it. So I wanted to actually take the time in this video and explain what was going on and what the situation is. So to begin with I'd like to start by saying that truth is simply not a democracy. We have facts and we have evidence and that's the way that it is. We have no obligation to teach things which are contradicted by every single shred of empirical evidence simply because they're different. Should we teach alternatives such as the earth being flat? Should we teach kids in our med schools that demons cause disease and not germs? No, of course we shouldn't. I'm all for teaching reasonable alternatives, but the problem is, as is a Christian speaking, creationism is not a reasonable alternative. It is unanimously rejected by the scientific community, and it's contradicted by every single shred of empirical evidence. Again, the Earth being flat. It's different. Should we teach that too? Coincidentally, look up the um, Flat Earth Society. They hold the same about um, percentage of scientists who reject evolution. So, that being said, take a look at this quick clip. I think the state ought to give students exposure to all points of view. And, uh, you know, I would hope that that would be all points of view. And not only evolution, I think that they also should be given exposure uh, to, to the theories not only of evolution, but to the, uh, the basis of uh, those who believe in creationism. Now, do you understand why Governor Huckabee's response was intellectually bankrupt? Now, Ms. Lofton and the Polk County School Board, in particular to you, one thing that's important about the flying spaghetti monster is that, yes, it's satirical. Yes, it's absurd, the idea of a flying spaghetti monster floating around creating things. However, the issue of it is is that it's a logically solid argument and has a better place in our classrooms than creationism does for the simple reason that the Gospel of Flying Spaghetti Monster teaches that although there's this absurd um, deity going around creating things, it is also tricking the scientists and planting evidence to make it look as if evolution happens. Now, as crazy as it sounds, again, it explains the most evidence because at least it explains why all the data and all the evidence make it look as if evolution happens. Creationism doesn't do that. In fact, creationism is completely out of whack with the evidence. So as crazy as it may sound, the, this absurd idea of a flying spaghetti monster, it has more of a place in our classrooms than creationism does. When you understand why you scoff at the flying spaghetti monster, you'll understand why the educated world scoffs at intelligent design. Now, the other thing that you commonly hear is that it's fair to teach both. It's fair to teach creationism and evolution. If you teach one, you have to teach the other. You've had the scientists, you've heard what they have to say, now listen to what we have to say. Um, there's a major problem with that, simply because they're at utterly different levels of proof, and creationism is not only unsupported by evidence, it's contradicted by evidence. So in order to get where evolution is, in the scientific theory in general, now this um, image right here, the bottom half is evolution, the upper half is creationism and what they want to do to get to the same path. To start off with evolution or any scientific theory, you have to start off with observation. Make a hypothesis, an experiment, you have to repeat the experiment, and then you submit it for peer review. The editor of the publication that you're trying to get it published in will write back with many revisions. It, it, this is a tedious process, only 10% of papers ever get published, it, it's pretty hard to do. You retest, you revise, and then you resubmit it. If you are published, other scientists are, they're vultures. They do, they want to do nothing but to disprove whatever you have shown. That's, that's, how, sci that's how the scientific community works. It's by disproving. Um, they analyze your results for years, and if they get any in inconsistent results, it's a major problem. Now, after many, many years and many trials, the scientific community may accept it. If it does that, it becomes a theory, and after even more time, it's good to teach. Creationism, on the other hand, wants to bypass that entire peer review expert panel and simply go from reading the Bible to being able to teach it. I'm sure that you see the problem with that from a logical standpoint and an intellectual standpoint, but furthermore, that's the exact opposite of fair. Evolution and any other scientific theory has to go through rigorous testing, but creationism simply gets to jump to the front of the line because it's different? That's absurd, and by all means, it's least fair. 
another reason why it's an awful idea to teach creationism, other than the fact that it's simply not true, is that there is no controversy whatsoever in the scientific community about it. And and that's a problem, is that the creationist movement seeks to create the image of some sort of controversy going on. No. There are four times more historians that reject the Holocaust than there are scientists rejecting evolution. It simply doesn't happen. And I'll actually, um, my next video is going to be about this. But the fact of the matter is, there's no debate whatsoever. The time for reasonable doubt has come and gone in regards to evolution. And it's right now open to about as much reasonable doubt as whether or not the Earth goes around the sun. There is no doubt. The scientific community is not divided, but what creationists try to do is create the dishonest impression that it is divided. Furthermore, creationists are utterly ignorant, frankly, about science in general. Because if they weren't, they would know the evidence, know how to interpret it, and they wouldn't be creationists. But the matter of fact is, when they go and try and support that, they're inadvertently, or advertently, depending on the person, bringing in misinformation, which is worse off than no information whatsoever. How many times have you heard that there are no missing links and things like that, or all mutations are bad? This is the work of creationists, and it's simply not true whatsoever. I mean, this is there's no doubt about it. I mean, these are facts. They're, they're not open for discussion. So by allowing creationism to slide in there, we're not only failing to teach our children, we're teaching them the wrong thing, which is a major problem. And the last thing that's wrong about teaching creationism is that it's downright shameful to let the children decide. That is such an awful, awful, awful idea, because it's, you're, you're being shameful. You're forgoing your God-given intellect in favor of fanaticism and things that aren't supported by any shred of evidence. And you're not only raising a nation that's utterly ignorant about science, but why would you let the children decide? Do you let kids decide what time they want to go to bed? Do you let kids decide if they want to drink beer or not? No, you're the adult. You're supposed to be educated enough to think and use reason and make a fair judgment that's not based on fanaticism or anything like that. You owe it to the kids to not teach them that and to decide for them what's reasonable and what's not. And by teaching creationism and things like that, you're utterly failing them. So lastly, why is it important? Why does it matter if we teach evolution or not? Well, to begin with, the National Academy of Sciences has called it the unifying theory of biology because it unites the disciplines. That is to say that the recent research explosions have been due solely to evolution because you can take information in one experiment with one organism in one discipline of biology and apply it across the board to suddenly thousands of others. Aside from that, aside from the fact that we're raising a nation that's utterly ignorant about biology, and aside from the fact that I use evolution in the form of 16S ribosomal typing every week to diagnose idiopathic oral infections and essentially save lives. And this is a tool that's based solely on evolution, nothing else. We can overlook all those, and let's listen to Bill Maher explain why it's important and why we should take it into consideration. If someone believes that the Earth is 6,000 years old, when every scientist in the world tells us it's billions of years old, why shouldn't I take that into account when I'm assessing the rationality of someone I'm going to put into the highest office in the land. Well, guys, that's about it. By all means, check out my other videos for proof and evidence for evolution. And as always, creationists, you're more than welcome to leave grammatically horrific comments. Have a good one.